Uh, Colonel Layton, I mean, what is going on? This is the latest incident, this third shoot down of a, of a craft. First it was a balloon, now we have these unidentified objects in a week. Um, what are your thoughts as you're looking at all of this? Is this, uh, you know, these things are shot down as, a, as an abundance of caution and, you know, they're on our radar screen and we're looking for them because they're, it's top of mind? Or is there something more to be concerned about here? Well, I think, Jim, the, the big thing is that obviously there's heightened awareness now at this point. So, uh, you know, you had the incident a week ago where we shot down uh, the Chinese surveillance balloon, who were pretty convinced that that's exactly what that was. And then we start seeing all these other objects. Uh, clearly, the radar operators for NORAD are very sensitive now to anything that even looks remotely like uh, an unusual object in the skies. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, when you look at where these other two objects, the second and the third object, uh, where they were. Uh, the second one was near Prudhoe Bay, which is a major energy production area for the United States. Uh, and then you look at the third one over the Yukon, also rich in resources. Uh, so there are all kinds of possibilities here. Could it be a weather balloon? Absolutely. Uh, are there other things that it could be? Yes. And we just have to really find out exactly what kinds of things these are. But it's very clear that at least in one instance, in one instance, we've had uh, a testing of the American and Canadian air defense systems. Uh, in the other two instances, that could also be the case. And so we have to really assess where these came from and uh, you know, what, they, what the capabilities of these objects are. Is it a little strange that we're, we're about a day, or more than a day, since the shooting down of that object over Alaska, or off the coast of Alaska yesterday, we still haven't been told by the government what it is? Yeah, that's that is a bit strange. Although uh, I guess we have to keep in mind that uh, you know it's a very remote location. Uh, I've been up there in that area once in my Air Force career, and yeah. it is bleak. It's and the end of the world. It is literally the end of the world. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those areas where it's very hard to get uh, all the rescue missions in there and the retrieval missions. Uh, so to do the forensic analysis that uh, is being conducted now on the Chinese surveillance platform, uh, that is going to take some time. And also keep in mind, it's a long distance from Quantico if they choose to bring it to Quantico again. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's another reason why they probably don't know exactly uh, what it is yet. Uh, and uh, once that happens, we'll probably take a, a week or two before we get some idea of, uh, of what the, these two last objects actually are. And what about this uh, element of uh, Natasha Bertrand's reporting that the pilots had differing accounts as to what they saw? And in this one particular piece of information that she just reported again a few moments ago, which I think might be giving some people the willies, which is uh, that the pilots could not ascertain as to what the propulsion system was of this particular object. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Jim, these, uh, you know, Your pilot, thoughts on, yeah. yeah, the pilots, uh, you know, as they fly by very quickly, they've got, you know, a few seconds to take a, a good look at, uh, at, at this craft or whatever object this is. Yeah. Uh, and in some cases, uh, what, what's called a misrep uh, is what the report that the pilot submits to headquarters and to the intelligence shop. And when they look at that, then they uh, can determine it's basically an eyewitness account uh, of, of a car crash or something similar to that. And when you look at that, then you start are piecing together, okay, this is what they saw, and then you combine that with the actual forensic evidence uh, of the pieces and parts that we're able to gather from these incidents, and then we can perhaps better ascertain whether or not there really was a propulsion system, whether it just flew along with the wind stream, uh, or if there was some other uh, aspect to this that we don't know about. Are there technologies that are being used that we don't understand yet? All of that is possible, unlikely, but possible, and so those are the things we have to consider. And it, it, the possibility that we might have a foreign power like China or Russia sort of poking and prodding with these objects. How concerning is that from a national security standpoint? So these are the kinds They're, of things. These are major no-nos, aren't they? Well, we do that all the time. Yeah. We do it to them, they do it to us. But here's yeah. the no-no part. We don't overfly their territory. They have, in these cases, overflown our territory. Uh, if it is, in fact, uh, the objects two and three are, in fact, from either China or Russia. We know that in the case of the first object, the balloon, obviously the Chinese did that. That was the big no-no. So the, in, the way things run in the w reconnaissance world now is, uh, yes, you test the systems, but you don't overfly the systems, the air defense systems of, a, of a, an adversary. Don't get caught. And you, well, and you certainly don't get caught, not like yeah. Francis Gary Powers 
Congress back in the early 1960s, you right. know, who definitely got caught. But yeah. the rules have changed since then, so we don't do that kind of thing anymore. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, these kinds of assessments, yes, the Chinese and the Russians are obviously always testing our air defenses. Uh, it's very logical that they did this again. Uh, let's see if the facts bear that supposition out.